Welcome to Learn It, a series of digital scrapbooking tutorials by Studio Wendy at Scrapbook Graphics. Today we're going to be looking at the Power Scrap It actions and scripts for Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. This giant toolbox was inspired by Katie the Scrapbook Lady and her Power Scrapping method of digital scrapbooking. Katie has developed an in-depth and comprehensive class that's available from time to time at Big Picture Classes that really goes into depth um, on this method. But as a brief overview, it's just a way of scrapbooking that helps you to maximize your time. So it helps you group like tasks together and helps you to make the most of the small chunks of time that you have. So if you don't have two or three hours to sit down and spend on perfecting a layout, maybe you only have 20 minutes, it's a way of being able to really harness those 20 minutes and achieve something out of them. So thank you, Katie, for working with me on these actions, and let's take a look at how they work. So I have loaded my scripts into the correct folder by copying the entire Wendesign Scraps folder into the um, place indicated in the tutorial for my OS. And I have loaded the actions into the photo effects folder. And by clicking here on the third button, the photo effects button, that brings up this drop down menu. And that allows me to choose the Power Scrap It action set here. And once I do that, all of the Power Scrap It actions show up right here um, in the effects palette. There are a bunch of actions here, and we're going to go briefly through what each one does. And we're actually going to start towards the bottom here. We have the starter actions, the 12 by 12, 8 by 8, custom, and template actions. All are the beginning place for this set of actions. They will start your layout. The 12 by 12 and 8 by 8 create canvases in those sizes. The custom allows you to choose any size that you want. And the template will actually allow you to select a template to begin your layout with. The next up are the rotating and flipping actions. Those are rotate 180, rotate 90 counterclockwise, rotate 90 clockwise, flip horizontal, and flip vertical. And these are fantastic when you use templates because you can change um, the look of the template and by just simply changing the direction that it's flipped or rotated. And that enables you to use a template over and over again and still get a unique look. And at the same time, you're able to keep that look consistent throughout a series of pages. And I really like to do that when I'm doing a complete album on a vacation or um, a particular topic. Using one set of templates and rotating them is a great way to bring continuity. So that's what those actions are for. Then we have our basic scrapping actions. We of course have the add one paper and add one element action that do exactly what they say. The add journaling will add a block of text. The add title will add a single line of text. And then we have the add batch actions. And these will add an entire folder full of images. You can use them to add an entire folder of papers, an entire folder of elements, an entire folder of photos, or you can dump everything that you want in a layout into one folder and just run it to add everything in there. And the difference between this set of five of them is the shadowing that's applied as they're placed into your file. You can choose from a large bottom shadow, a large top shadow, no shadow, a small bottom shadow, or a small top shadow. And when you're power scrapping, this is a fantastic way to get a bunch of layouts started and ready to go for later when you have more time. So we are going to take a look at how to do um, a layout using these. And of course, when you're power scrapping, you may only be using one or two of these actions at a time, but we're just going to briefly go through them from the beginning to the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is to open up one of the templates that Katie the Scrapbook Lady designed to go with this set. So I'm clicking on the starter template action and clicking apply. When the next message comes up, it just describes the action and I'm going to click continue. 
Then I'm going to locate the templates folder. And I know, I'm not exactly sure how many photos I want to use, but I know that I have at least three. So I'm going to find the three photo template in here and click open. I'm going to be prompted to save it and I'm going to call this my beach layout and click save. When I have the option box come up, I want to make sure I choose LZW compression, PC or Mac, and then zip compression. And this will keep the Photoshop files as small as possible by saving them in this type of compressed layer TIFF format. I should also mention that Elements users need to have a blank document open before they can get started on um, running actions. So when this action is done running, and this is just opening up the template and resaving it under another name so that I don't save over it by accident, I will go ahead and close out of the um, other documents. Here is my template. And now I'm ready to start putting things into it. So I could rotate it if I want. I'm not going to yet until I see um, what I have pulled in here. I have gone ahead and put all of my photos, elements, and papers that I liked into one folder. So I'm going to use the add batch action. And I generally scrap with my shadows on the bottom. So I'm going to choose the small bottom action. And I can always change the settings on any layers that I want to later. So I'm going to click apply. I will get a message here about the action. Click continue. And now I will be prompted to choose my folder of images. So here I have a folder I've set up called layout sample and I'm going to click choose. And I should mention that part of this action set are the scripts that were developed for me by Anna Forest Designs for use in this particular set. So I'm going to press OK. And now it is going to open every single one of those photos, papers, and elements, and it's going to put them into my layout right here. This action also names the layers according to the file names to make them easier to find later. Once it pulls everything in, we are given the option to resize everything right now. Typically, um, if you are scrapping smaller than 12 by 12, this is a really handy option because it will allow you to take everything and proportionally reduce it to fit onto your canvas. In this case, since I'm scrapping 12 by 12, I'm going to leave everything the size it is and just press enter or function return on the keyboard. And now you'll see that I have one layout all ready to save and set aside for when I'm ready for designing. Or I can get to work right away and what I find easiest is option clicking on the bottom layer and working my way up. So this would be a background paper so I'm going to scroll up and see what options I have in here for my main background paper. Choose from one of these that I imported. I like this one here, so I'm going to move it to the back and turn off that layer. Next up in this template is a paper strip for the bottom, and I want to find something a little bit um, with a little bit of a pattern on that. So I'm going to move that to the bottom. I'm going to move it right above my paper strip and clip it by holding down the Option key and hovering my mouse in between the two layers until it turns into two intersecting circles. When I click, that will automatically clip it to that layer. Next up is another paper. And for this one, I want to choose the sandy colored paper that I saw up here. Put that right above there and clip it right to it. And then I have three photo spots. So the next thing I'm going to do is look at what photos I pulled in. I know I want to use this one, so let's pop that down here. I think I'll use that in the middle spot, clip it to it. I'm going to drag it around to position it, 
and I can press Command T to transform it. And when I'm happy, press Enter. It's another photo. To go up and down on the keyboard, I'm using the Command bracket or Control bracket buttons and those will easily move the images up and down without having to use the mouse. So I'm going to put a nice beach shot over here. And for the last picture, I want to go ahead and use the sunset. So I'm going to pop that down here, clip that, and resize it. Press enter, and now my photos are on there. The next thing I can do, keep working up, is my title. In this case, the title has been provided for me that I can easily just click and edit it, edit the fonts and edit the words. If that wasn't in there, I could add a title by using the add title action, which I'll do right now, and click apply, click continue. And you'll see it adds a title here, allows me to change the font by scrolling through it till I find something I like. I can select it and change it here as well. When I'm done, it will allow me to reposition the title wherever I want it. And I'm going to tuck it right up here and press enter. I can also add journaling by clicking on the Add Journaling button and clicking Apply. When I get the message here, I'm going to click Continue, and it will bring up a journaling box. And I can click on the corners of this journaling box and resize it out to anywhere I want it to be. I can type my new type in here as much as I want. I can select it all, Command or Control All, Command Control C for Copy, Command Control V for Paste, if I want to put a lot of type in there, I can do that right there. And if I select it all, I can even change the color by going in here like that. When I'm happy with it, function enter, return, we'll finish placing that on the page. Next up, I'm going to take a look at those elements that I popped in here and see which ones I want to use. And I will go through and position my elements right where I want them, moving things up and down with my buttons if I need to. And as I'm working, if I see that I need another element or paper that I didn't plan on to begin with, I can use the Add Element action. So just click Apply. It's going to open up here. And it will allow me to choose any of the other items that I have in my hard drive. In this case, I'm working with the Studio Mix Seaside Collaborative Kit. And here's the sea star I missed adding, so I just click place, and it will place it here on my document, allowing me to resize and rotate, of course. And when I get it where I want it, just press enter. This will allow me to name it, and it shadows it slightly, which I can also edit. So that is about all there is to this set of actions, and you'll see how it can come in really handy with um, saving time and setting up your layouts to getting you down to where you're ready to be creative. You've got the batch actions, the journaling actions, the add paper, add element actions, the starter actions, and the rotating and flip actions. So I hope this set comes in really handy in your power scrapping. It helps you get even more amazing pages done to document your lives and tell your stories. And thank you for checking it out. And a special thank you to Katie the Scrapbook Lady for working with me on these and helping to 
provide something to um, enable us all to be even more productive. To learn more about power scrapping, be sure to check out Katie the Scrapbook Lady's class at Big Picture Classes. You can also stop by the Digi Show, an online podcast where Katie is co-host and has talked and referred to several times about her power scrapping method. You can learn a lot there. And visit her at scrapbookladypages.com. Thanks for listening to this episode of Learn It.